Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We greet the season of Advent today with our Advent blues and the beautiful Advent wreath and Christmas gatherings on the horizon. It's easy to be lulled into the wonder and awe of the season, and we want to be except that the actual readings for today don't really allow for that. They don't fit with what we hope or imagine the time before Christmas to be. We always start the Advent season with disaster, with chaos, with anguish, with apocalypse. This is not the same stress we feel when there's too much on our plates to fit into one month. It's not the seasonal joys and challenges that come from trying to maintain traditions when the world around us has changed. It's not the frustration of managing relationship dynamics in the holidays and angsting over finding the right gift for everyone. Though these feelings are valid and fully accessible for many of us this time of year, they're not the same as what we hear today, as what we start the season of Advent with. We have the opportunity to step into the situation of the people in Jesus' time and before in our readings and what they're experiencing. There's a strategy in psychological practice when mining the depths of a person's anxiety and concern about a situation that asks the question, what's the worst that could happen? And the practitioner keeps asking the same question, and then what would happen? And then what would happen? And then what would happen? Today's readings would be one of the last layers of that question. And then what would happen? The end times would happen. The sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the heavens. Everything will end. But not everything. God's word will live on no matter what. What we witness in our readings are people in dire need of divine intervention, of a sign that God is still with them and cares about their suffering. Even in the very different circumstances of people in Jesus' time and today, we both know what it's like to witness heartache, violence, and pain. We don't have to look far at all to see that our world is not as it should be, as God intends it to be. The continuous war in Ukraine, the unimaginable violence in Israel and Gaza, the effects of poverty, political brokenness, racism, COVID, climate change. These realities threaten to overwhelm us. On top of our own personal lives and stresses, many of us are confused, grieving, fearful, and exhausted. We ask the barbed question in our hearts and to our loved ones that we don't always want to admit. Where is God in all this? Why does it sometimes feel like our Lord is asleep on the job? Theologian Debbie Thomas offers the perspective that Advent provides three primary gifts for God's people. In this season of waiting, we dare to approach God with our doubts, our fears, our wonderings, our anger, our hurt, our humanness. The first gift of Advent is the chance to be completely real with God, to name the depths of our own longing, our personal and communal communal realities. We're given permission to tell the truth, even if that truth is complicated and tinged with sorrow. The truth is we need God. We need God to show up and stay. We need God to love, hold, deliver, and restore us. To truly understand and hear the gospel as good news, we have to put ourselves in the shoes of the people in Mark's time. Like Job's friends did, we need to sit in the ashes next to our grieving neighbor, next to a refugee displaced from their home, next to the exhausted nurse, 
the mourning spouse, the disappointed parent of someone addicted to something. These are the depths in which Jesus offers the good news. This is where Mark lives. Similarly, the passage from the prophet Isaiah gives voice to unbridled emotions. Anger, grief, disillusionment, desperation. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. The assumption is that God has abandoned the Israelites and they're on their own after falling short of God's hope for them as a nation. As they return home from exile in Babylon, they can't seem to get it together. The collective trauma and displacement has taken its toll. They are divided as to how to move forward, how to start over, how to rebuild their world together. For the people in the time when Mark was written, the good news is that even after a disastrous revolt against Roman occupation, God is with them. Even after watching their Jewish temple, their home base, the sacred heart of their world demolished, God remains with them. Mark's message is one of hope in the midst of utter catastrophe. The second gift of this season is more of a discipline than a gift. I wonder if we believe the only season that calls for spiritual discipline is Lent, the time when we contemplate our mortality and Jesus' ultimate sacrifice for the sake of love. But actually, Advent offers its own discipline, an invitation to waiting. In Advent, we live in the quiet expectation and anticipation of the not yet. We're invited to stop rushing around, to look with different eyes for the sacred things that God is growing that are not yet fully formed. The places and spaces and people in which God will show God's self. As Paul says, we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we know waiting is not easy, especially as everything in our lives is set up to minimize waiting. I imagine many of us use the, you know, shorthand checkout line because we don't want to actually wait in line. There's all kinds of things. The, the internet, do you remember the AOL download sound? That probably just strikes fear into people's hearts that we don't have to deal with that anymore. <laughs> There's so many things we don't want to wait for. To choose to actively wait, to hold steady rather than barrel forward, takes practice and patience. This is a gift of the church in this time of year. We strengthen our waiting muscles in Advent when we recognize that necessary things, things worth waiting for, happen in the soft, rich soil of the dark. Spring seeds break open in the dark winter soil. We grow when we sleep. And when we practice waiting, we take things out of our hands, our control, and hand over the kitchen timer, the alarm clock, to the divine. The third gift of Advent is its power to prepare us for the God who is coming, on God's time and in God's way. In our reading from Isaiah today, the prophet and his community plead for God to do big, sweeping things like the Lord once did in the days of the Exodus. Come as fire and cloud, liberate us from our enemies, from the sins that draw us from God and our own ways of rebellion against God. Make big changes, tear open the heavens. We can lend our own prayers to this list, bring an end to the war in Israel and Gaza, protect the refugees, save the children. And while you're at it, God, save the world. Bring peace. And what does our creator, the potter, do? Our God shows up in the exact places we need them, but in ways we don't expect. So we have to prime ourselves to be able to see God in these different places and spaces. God liberates through love, not force. God walks into the unknown darkness with us, not just into the places bathed with light. And God comes to us precisely in our need, though we may not always recognize 
our Lord. Our Creator comes to us in the form of a baby who was born to change the world. Instead of orchestrating things from far away, God comes near to us. The meaning of Advent is to come close. In Advent, we're invited to lean into the complexity of the season by waiting and watching for Christ to show up in all kinds of places and spaces we wouldn't think to wear the face of Christ. It's okay to be real with God, to pray the prayer of Isaiah, oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Because that's exactly what God does. Like a garment stretched to its breaking point, God rips open the clouds in the sky and descends on Jesus in the form of a dove as Jesus comes out of the waters of his baptism. And at the end of Good Friday, the creator of the universe tears the temple curtain in two, showing that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God can and will tear open the heavens and come down out of love to restore us to the one who knits the whole cosmos together. And so we light one candle for hope today, knowing that we are not alone in this troubled and complicated world, that God is here with us in the darkness and in the light, in the waiting and in the watching. So dear church, come receive the gifts of Advent.